Good evening, everybody. This is Gerald Salenti, and it's Wednesday, September 28th, 2022. And again, we're very, 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 very honored to have with us Judge Andrew Napolitano, the number one man when it comes to judicial authority and what in the world is going on in America and around the world, and particularly how we, the people of Slavelandia, have lost our freedoms because of the dictators in charge that imbeciles and morons call presidents have robbed us of our constitutional and our uh, Bill of Rights. The Bill of Rights is, uh, I guess it's like a currency that's no longer the bill isn't worth anything because the judge who wrote over here an article that'll be out, an American in Moscow. Uh, welcome, Judge. Please tell us more about that. Let me just go back. Uh, uh, hi, Gerald. It's always a pleasure, as you and as our as your viewers know, uh, for us to be together. Last week, my article was called "A Bill of Temporary Privileges," because that's basically what the Bill of Rights has become. Even though Madison authored it to keep the government away from our natural human rights, every single right in the Bill of Rights today is subject to the approval of the government. A right is a claim against the whole world. A privilege is something that someone in authority gives you. So the government, local, state, and federal, has turned the Bill of Rights into a bill of temporary privileges. Your social media is aggressive. You can't carry a gun. You're shouting at somebody who's about to get an abortion. That's not freedom of speech. We're going to uh, arrest you. Uh, We're looking for your communication with foreign people. Forget about the Fourth Amendment. We'll listen to everything you say. That, of course, brings us to Snowden. The reason I wrote about an American in Moscow, which is about uh, Edward Snowden, is because two days ago he became a Russian citizen. It's sad that he had to uh, do this, but the American deep state, which chased him all over the world, finally couldn't, uh, couldn't reach him in Moscow, he's resigned to stay there, so he became a Russian citizen while retaining his American citizenship. Why is he there? Because he had the courage to reveal the most extensive unconstitutional criminal behavior by the federal government in America since uh, the Civil War, which was the spying on everyone perpetrated by the George W. Bush and Barack Obama administrations. Mm -hmm the use by the NSA uh, of sophisticated software, the use of a statute that was enacted during the Bush administration that gave the telecoms and the internet service providers immunity from cooperating with the feds, but which forced them to cooperate uh, with the feds to capture every keystroke, whether you delete it or not, uh, every communication on your mobile and desktop device, all (coughs) <coughs> pardon me, all fiber optic data transmitted into the U.S., out of the U.S., or within the U.S. is captured by the NSA without a warrant. Now, sometimes they get a warrant as a subterfuge, as a cover, so that we and and the judges who issue these warrants will say, oh, how nice, they're following the law, they're following the Constitution. But in reality, it's just a subterfuge. All of this was revealed by Snowden who was indicted by the Trump uh, Department of Justice for the very same crimes for which the Biden Department of Justice is now contemplating President Trump. Trump, when Snowden was indicted, called for his execution. After four years in the tender mercies of his own intelligence community, Trump changed his mind and actually had serious conversations about pardoning Snowden. Should have pardoned Snowden and he should have pardoned Assange. They both are heroes who exposed painful truths about what the government does to people and what it tried to keep from keep from us. You think so when you just, you know, you mentioned Madison, why should we listen to anything Madison or any of the founding fathers said? They were racist, sexists. They were uh, anti-transgenderists. There were slave owners. And let's let's really be moronic and stupid because no, that's I, all this has turned into. You're just providing, was, 
you're providing the details of the criminality of what this country's become. Yes. This Yesterday, is I was stuck disgusting. in traffic. Yesterday, how, I was how stuck these in clowns that that oh, how could how could anybody how could anybody take orders from a little murderous piece of garbage scum crap? A little daddy's boy born on third base and thought he had a home run, George W. Bush. How dumber can you be? Well, Bush uh, was the president during 9-11, so it was on his watch that his administration either looked the other way, which most of us believe, or was asleep at the switch, and then to sort of compensate for that, they repressed, as always happens in wartime, wars that they initiated, they repressed to the liberties of the American public. Yep. So the law that gives the telecoms and the internet service providers immunity uh, for allowing the NSA to plug into their mainframes uh, is, a, is a Bush era law, which his administration browbeat uh, a Republican Congress into enacting. If you go to the AT&T building, in San Francisco, and you can get through security and get on the elevator and you get off the wrong floor and go through two more levels of security, you'll find yourself on the NSA floor, the NSA floor of the AT&T building, where the NSA computers are literally plugged into the AT&T computers uh -huh. to capture everything that is transmitted on AT&T. Same thing for uh, Verizon and uh, and Apple and and all of the others, the government bribed them into doing this by giving them immunity from lawsuits, but also uh, forced them to do it as well. Yesterday, I was stuck in traffic uh, in front of a building called the Manhattan Institute for Science, and I thought, "What the heck is this?" Ah, it used to be James Madison High School. It used to be the most academically oriented public high school in all of Manhattan. And they changed the name because Madison was a slaveholder. Forget that he wrote the Constitution. Forget yeah. that he wrote the Bill of Rights. Forget that to him, Congress shall make no law meant no law. They found a flaw in his behavior, which was typical of Southern white males at the time. And he, like Jefferson, freed his slaves in his will. And so they want to strip all remembrance of him. It's just farcical, farcical for him. Oh, oh, he was a slave owner, huh? How about all the people that the Nobel Peace of Crap Prize winner, Barack Obama, slaughtered? How about right. him being quoted in the book, Double Down, I'm really good at killing people? Yes. How about the murder of little Billy Clinton? How about the murder of Bush? How about yes. the murder of Nixon, Johnson? How about those murders? Oh, no, that's fine, Salenti. Calm down. We have to hate the founding fathers and strip Americans of all of their constitutional rights because now we're in charge. Look, you write an article every week, and every week you're writing basically the same thing how they're robbing us of our constitutional rights and how this country's turned into basically a communist slash fascist dictatorship. You can't find a right articulated or implied in the Bill of Rights that is not materially interfered with by the government today. And, and it's, it's, not, it's not Democrats it's not Republicans, it's big government. It's the big government party with a Republican wing that likes war and borrowing and a Democrat wing that likes war and taxing. Yeah. And they're both driving us into uh, oblivion. They both wanna fight uh, foreign wars. Uh, they both wanna tell us how to live and they both think nothing of interfering uh, with the liberties that Madison, uh, articulated uh, in the Bill of Rights. Bill of, the purpose of the Bill of Rights was not to create rights. Government can't create rights. They come from our humanity. The purpose of the Bill of Rights was to restrain the government and keep it from interfering with rights. It has failed.
Look, I, you know, in all due respect, you call what you wash it, you know, you call them big government. You're a crime syndicate. But by the things that you said, the, the, by the, the repulsive kids and the Democrats, what they lead us into. They both love war. They both love to steal our money. And they both love to tell us what to do. Right. They're so, a crime syndicate. I'm they're very, murderers very, and thieves. Yes. By yes, their so deeds, you shall know them. There are three ways to acquire uh, wealth. One, one model is to trade your intellect or the sweat of your brow for someone who will pay you for it. Another model uh, is to be fortunate enough to inherit wealth. And the third is the mob model. Give me your money or else. Which model does the government use? <laughs> <laughs> well, you well, can't make this up. Yeah. Oh, oh now, now we're spending $80 billion to bring in more IRS agents to steal more of our money with the bullshit that, oh, we're going to get the rich. No, you're not going to rich people know how to build, get around this stuff. Who are you talking to? Well, we're talking to the sixth graders because that's all Americans' minds are. And they believe the crap that we, we, we throw out, they swallow. They're going to go after right. the small business people, all the little people, and they'll get every penny from us that they could steal. Correct. Correct. You because know, that, that, that is their model. You know, your, your money or your life. I mean, that's the criminal gang. Yep. You know, I live on a farm in New Jersey and up the up the road is a criminal gang that forces me to pay them thousands of dollars every quarter just for being here. They call themselves the town council. I call them a criminal gang. Yeah. In fact, you know, I once said to the mayor, who's a decent person, he's a pig farmer, a pig farmer. He's been the mayor here for 40 years. <laughs> and uh, I said to him, why don't you compete with the next town over for my tax dollars? Let's see who can provide me the more services for less cost. He goes, compete for tax dollars. That's the most communistic thing I ever heard of. I said, communistic? It's pure capitalistic. But you guys don't want to do it. You don't want any competition. Government succeeds because it has no competition. It has guaranteed clients, people, guaranteed income, our wealth, nobody to compete with. It's doomed to, to failure and it's doomed to destroy us if we don't stop it. And I'm talking about a small town in a conservative part of New Jersey where there isn't even a Democratic Party. Yeah. You know, talking about how they're killing us in so many different ways, the United States is now there. Um, uh, Reuters reported that uh, they're going to send another $12 billion more to Ukraine and that brings the total up now to about $65.6 billion. Wow. And the uh, Russians' entire annual military budget in 2021 was $65.9 billion. Uh, no, excuse me, they're bringing the total to 67.6. $67.6 billion of our money has gone to fight this Ukraine war. And as this country is going down the crapper and they're stealing all our money from us in taxes, the amount of taxes I pay are off the charts. They, 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 I can't believe it in this little stupid town that I'm in with a little ignorant moron mayor and a bunch of jerks around them. And I got to pay for all this money. I got a little arrogant clown running the, the, the public school system. I think he makes like about $250,000, a superintendent, wow. a super jerk, a super arrogant piece of crap. And it's all over. Well, you know, the $67 billion, uh, that you're talking about, that does not go to Ukraine. That goes to Raytheon. Yeah. What goes to Ukraine is... Uh, military hardware that we've already bought, purchased, and received, which is supposedly for the national defense of the United States, according to Doug McGregor, that stuff is seriously depleted. It's at its lowest peacetime rate ever. Listen, I'm not in favor of these huge uh, Defense Department budgets, not at all, but people should understand there is cash that goes to Ukraine. God only knows where it ends up. 
when Rand Paul introduced legislation to modify this so that there'd be an American receiver there who would certify where the money is going to, uh, the Democrats defeated that res uh, that resolution. So the money just goes there. We don't know where the heck uh, it ends up. But the military equipment uh, comes from U.S. to Poland. It's already been in Poland, goes from Poland to the Ukraine, and then our supplies are depleted. So this is a win-win for the military industrial complex. The generals get to order their toys. Uh, Raytheon and its colleagues, I'm just picking on Raytheon because that's where the secretary of defense was on the board before he became the secretary of defense and after he was a four-star general. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. It's a, it's a revolving door that's been going on since Eisenhower warned it about, warned us about it in, in January of 61. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, this is the numbers you point out, the numbers you point out, Gerald, are staggering that the federal government, that the Biden administration is authorized and Congress has approved, president gets to spend it when he wants. Congress has authorized the president to spend more money in Ukraine than Russia spends in its entire military for a year. Yep. That is just a mind boggling comparison that the American public, whether you like Putin or whether you think he's a butcher, whatever your opinion is, you need to know that these numbers are just out of sight. Yeah. Oh, you, yeah, you mean the butcher Putin? Hey, he can't come close to George W. Bush. Can't come close to Obama. Can't come close to Clinton. Can't come close to Nixon. Can't come close to L.B. Jerkoff. Look at the murderers that these people are. And look how the media every day, every day covering the Ukraine war, bit by bit with propaganda, they didn't do this with the Iraq war. They didn't do this with the Afghan war. They didn't talk about America bombing the hell out of the places. Fallujah, oh, it's beautiful over there. Oh, what America's done in Syria, oh, that's fine. This hypocrisy, and here's the thing, you know, this, this war is ramping up big time, and step by step, they've led us into World War III. People think it happens just like that. They do it step by little, step by little, step by little, step, and now they just blew up the Nordstrom pipeline, and now they're blaming the Russians for doing it. How stupid can you be to swallow this shit? Right. Well, you know, uh, Colonel McGregor, whom you and I both know uh, and respect, uh, uh, reports uh, that American troops are on the ground in Ukraine and out of uniform. We've talked about this. Yep. Out of uniform is horrifically dangerous because they can be captured under the Geneva Convention and summarily executed as spies. But Putin knows who they are and knows where they are. One missile in the wrong place. Or, oh, by the way, there's also thousands of Americans in uniform in Poland training Ukrainian soldiers on the American equipment before it's shipped from Poland down uh, to Ukraine. One missile in the wrong direction into Poland or into a gaggle uh, of Americans in Ukraine. Uh, and that's the assassination of Archduke Ferdinand, by which I mean the public excuse for the beginning of World War III. You're right, these things start gradually and Joe Biden is sucking us into it. Yep, and, and, and the media keeps selling it and there's not one word about peace. Does not exist. You're hearing that little boy blinking, another arrogant little nothing. Oh, we went to Dalton, I went to Harvard and my daddy was, you know, it's F you. This little clown, he loved every war. He pushed for every war America's been in since that little jerk has been involved in the government. And he keeps saying more and more and more and more and more weapons to be sent to Ukraine. And where are the American people standing up against this? And they don't have any clue what's going on. They don't know how it started, why it started, and when it started. They have no idea. Hey, how about those Mets, huh? You know, the Yankees need a better second baseman. I mean, this is the crap that they know. 
They don't know the facts about this, so they swallow the garbage that the government propaganda sells them. And they believe we should hate Russia because they've been selling it to us all our lives. When we were right. kids, they had us hiding on the desks in case the Russians dropped an atom bomb on us. Well, I mean, the Cold well. War mentality, is now, now it's turning into a hot war. I am so concerned. And you're hearing this other, another, this guy looks like he could be the great grandson of Goebbels, this Jake Sullivan, who's our national security advisor to Biden. Do you see this guy on TV last week saying that if Russia uses any kind of nuclear weapons, we will respond, blah, 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 blah. Uh, they, they, uh, they're itching for war, Gerald, let's face it. They're in war. Yes. And, and the American people need to know that. And Congress just keeps approving and approving and approving more money, more money, more money. And voices like Rand Paul's are, are just drowned out. The 12 billion that you just talked about, which is actually part of funding the government from now until Christmas time. And I wish the government weren't funded, but, but that's the, the system. That 12 billion was never even debated on the floor of the Senate. Chuck Schumer and Mitch McConnell, just knowing they, between the two of them, they have enough votes to get anything they want done in the, in the Senate uh, and in uh, con conniving with Mrs. Pelosi, uh, they just added it into the legislation. So Thomas Massey uh, in the House and Rand Paul in the Senate didn't even have an, op had an opportunity to vote against it, but they didn't have an opportunity to object to it and make a statement on national television so that the public knows what's going on. Yeah. Uh, the number, the numbers are staggering. The destruction of Liberty uh, keeps getting worse and the March toward a hot war is more rapid because that's what Tony Blinken and company really want. So what are we going to do? You and I talk about it, and the people that uh, see me on Judging Freedom, my podcast, and the people that see you five days a week, the people that read uh, the Trends Journal, the folks that look at uh, lourockwell.com, you know, the people who understand uh, that there is a movement, uh, you won't see it on Fox News or CNN, but there is a movement for peace in this country know how dangerous this is, but you're right. The average American, particularly this time of year, the end of September is more interested in baseball and football uh, than they are in the value of the dollar and how much money is being borrowed to kill people 10,000 miles away. We need a new party. If we, you know, they just had that election in Italy where Maloney won, you know, populist movement. And we don't have that in America. We don't have a strong populist movement. No, and we that, don't. And, and, her, and that, that party was nothing just a few years ago. And that's what we really need in this country. And if we don't have it, we're, we're, going, to, we're, we're going to go down hard, fast. And this may be the end of life on earth if they keep going the way they do. Because you can analyze all the, what they're doing and give excuses and reasoning why. But the bottom line is, as I see it, these are mentally ill people that are running and ruining our lives. They are mentally ill. And we keep electing them or like-minded uh, people because the system is geared so only uh, people approved by the elites can get their names on the ballot. Trump has succeeded in getting some non-elitists on the ballots but they're probably going to uh, lose in November to the elites uh, in the other uh, in the other party. It almost doesn't matter who you vote for today, unless and until the Senate is filled with Rand Pauls and the House is filled yeah. with Thomas Matthews. And there are others of like mind, very few, unfortunately. Very few. Yeah, uh, we're going to be stuck with this system. I I think and you and I have talked about this in private, and, and I know you want to you want to go, but I think. The American government will collapse like the Soviet Union did. Nobody will accept uh, the dollar. It'll be worthless. People won't work for it anymore because they can't get paid. It won't be able to pay its debts. Chuck Schumer and company will be out of business and we will break off into small republics. 
question is, and I think I know your answer, the question is, can we survive as small republics? Yeah, again, I keep saying, too, when all else fails, they take you to war. Right. And that's what my great concern is, because it's failing. Look at the equity markets. The Dow's now down, you know, back in bear territory, one after another, NASDAQ deep in bear territory. You know, right. it, this thing is going down big and hard. And again, you just saw it with little Georgie Bush. The NASDAQ was down 66% the day before 9-11. His so too and his ratings were plummeting because people saw what a jerk he was. 9-11 happened. The Afghan war happened. Poof, everybody forgot about it. They've artificially propped up the equity markets with the, uh, uh, the housing boom, with the subprime mortgages. Oh, you don't have a job. You don't have any money coming in. You know, you owe money. You're in debt. Don't worry about it. You can get a mortgage and get a house. Remember that one? Yes. Yeah, so they artificially inflated everything. But again, when all those fails, they take you to war and they've taken us to war. And I'm very concerned that World War III is going to end our lives with a nuclear confrontation between the United States and Russia. Well, I share the concern. I share the fear. And the best you and I can do right now is to spread that concern and fear so that the public knows what the hell is being done in their name. Yep. So thanks so much, Judge, for all you do. Great being on with you. And we'll see you next week. The pleasure to be on with you, Gerald. Thank you.